so in preparation for this kit, obviously I got a lot to work on. Um, I did say that I was going to paint it. But I'm slowly reminded of the, of the headache I had when I was painting this kit white. Again, for those of you who remember me painting the 1 100 scale Master Grade 00 riser for the uh, Comic Con show last year. I'm. I know I'm. I'm I know I'm saying that I'm doing it. Now I could probably cheat. And even though I have spray painted my draw C with spray paint and it came out perfect, I learned from my mistakes on that. But that also I also reminded myself of the time when I painted um, the um, the Master Grade Force Impulse Kit with white paint, and I made you know I goofed up on that one as well. Uh, no way for me to repair it. So I've been considering what do I do? I mean, I could go to I could use a lacquer base paint. Um, excuse me, I can use acrylic base paint. But what I really want to use is lacquer paint. That's what I wanted to say. I was going to segue into that and then didn't edit myself properly. So yes, my intention would be to work with lacquer base paint for this build. And I think I have a lacquer, a white lacquer base paint. Huh? Let me see if I have it here. Yeah, here it is. Mr. Color number one, white. Now, technically, this is lacquer base paint. However, I don't think this little bottle will last me all these white parts. So, I have to. I may have to go to the uh, my favorite hobby store, FNM Hobbies, located in Denver, and pick up um, one more bottle of this. Now the interior, of course, the inner frame, I think what I'll do is, um, I don't know, should I make this gunmetal? I think I may use gunmetal, yes, because gunmetal is, it would probably look better with this, with the lacquer base paint, with, with the white of the lacquer uh, bleeding out of the kit. There's, um, it is, it is what it is. I think, yeah, chrome um, gunmetal will look good. As a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, Fujita is also doing uh, gunmetal as well and is in her frame. So uh, it's a good choice for this kit. I could go with normal, like, uh, I have a, uh, another gray here, like a uh, military gray color. But gunmetal looks great on these kits anyway. So uh, that's what I'm going to do with this kit. Now, after some careful observation of the uh, colors of the paint of this kit, I've noticed several variations, various color variations. The there are two types of colors here, as you can see. This is portion of the inner frame, while the out, um, which is mm, a lighter shade of gray. This one's a darker shade of gray. Now, which offs balance everything. I was originally going to paint the whole thing one, a whole darker section one color, but looking at it, it is clear that it's not the case. Um, this is actually, as a matter of fact, let me separate these. All this is in reference to the Gatling cannons, all these parts. So I'll put this to the side. Then this one is the bazooka and the magnum rifle. They give you two sets and some other uh, weaponry. So that's that. And the same thing here, more of the bazooka parts, the support of the, um, 
of the uh, tanks and some other things that I can't tell. But yeah, these are different color tones. So I have all this that I'm putting over here is for the obvious inner frame. I think also, I think also this part, tray A, tray A has a habit of having all the uh, same colors. So yeah, these are all these gray parts goes with this. So this is basically everything for the inner frame. That too. Um, I guess I want to make sure I get this right. So, so these are all charcoal. These are all the charcoal grays. So I think I'm going to paint that the gray. Keep it nice and even. The the weaponry will be gunmetal. That would be probably better to do that. Then there's two more sets of colors. We have these, which, if I'm not mistaken, I think these are the um, the clips for the um, what do you hell you call that gun? The Magnum the the Magnum beam rifle. Let me see. Let me check the Magnum beam rifle uh, setup here. Yeah, it's for this because I know it's a different color tone. And this is kind of like a turquoise blue, as you can see. Followed by the blue trim of this kit. Alright, you know what? Let me pull out the... If, I'm, if you hear some rustling noise, it's me moving things about, so just give me a second here. Some, some more Mr. Color paint. I, I have a distinct feeling I'm gonna have to make a make a trip either way to get all the other paints. No, it's not here. Let's check here. Oh, I definitely need my uh, Ayawata. Get that cleaned up and prepared for this kit. Oh, that's right. I put them all here. So I got normal blue, but blue will not be good for this. Um, let me guess here. I got my metallic blue, which would probably look good with this. I think the color would perfectly look good with this. I, I'm not going to do the whole kit metallic, so everybody just relax. But I guess that would be perfect for this, you know, considering it, it's only a small portion. And if I want to use gunmetal, you know, for the weaponry, it's perfect for that as well. So, uh, it off balances many things. It'll give it a little bit more depth to it. I think I may use that blue that I used on the draw C for this. This German gray, come on, focus, goddammit. Or is it me? Would be for the inner frame. And this, this metallic blue, blue, this normal metallic blue will be for this. I don't even have to spray it. Just normal paint, yeah, hand brush. So I got my color set. But I do need to, get, need to get another one of these. So as you can see right now, I'm starting to separate and clear, clean up the parts. Um, beginning with white. I'm still working with a lot of this parts here, which I have to shave off. I, I'm doing this in a way where I just remove it from the tray, separate it, keep it all in one section. Obviously, this tray is already full. I may have to read out from, remove the parts from here. But I'm these are the blues, of course. And uh, I'm just basically cutting off the remaining part to the plastic, sanding them down, doing a... Uh, where's my thing? Here we go. A one four hundred. I mean, a four hundredth uh, sanding grit, and then bringing it down to eight hundred sanding grit, so that way it's nice and smooth. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a wash, and of course, I'm gonna prime the parts after I put them all on their individual trees. Um, 
looking at the manual, of course, I've been advancing on a few things, trying to get some stuff completed um, instead of me doing it all in one shot. So, um, I think what I'm going to probably do after I clean up the white parts, I'm going to begin working on the on the the shuttle on this shuttle thingy, which is, looks really cool. It's all one. I think it's all the same, all one color except for a couple of gray parts here and there. Um, but I'll probably put things uh, together just to get it out of the way, like the fuel tanks, some of the um, superstructure, if possible. If not, obviously I will just have to make do with what it is and then just paint it and then put it together with the remaining gray parts. Yeah, because I'm looking at the only thing that's gray would have to be the the landing skirt, the the actual connector that connects the fuel tanks to the backpack, and some other stuff. So I'm going to get that out of the way. But it is a tedious job to do. I mean, with so many parts, it's ridiculous. At the same time, I also took care of a couple of weaponry. Like right over here. This is the uh, parts that might represent the Gatling cannons. Let's uh, assemble this one. This is actually the last one. This part here, I glued it. Now I just need to sand these two parts down. But to uh, assemble this, and let's assemble it now while we're at it. We take this part here. Put this one like that, like so. And uh, this part here, surprisingly, this is actually the hilt of the uh, gun. I don't know why they sting out where you have to actually pop, pull this out and then. Hang on a second. Actually, no, let's leave it there for now. But it's actually a part where you can. Oh, there it is, like that. It goes like this. But if you want to fire it, you want to take it out like this and put it in like that as a grip. And you'll see that in a few moments. So, you have the barrels, which I sanded down each in, each individual barrel around the edges. It shows a bit here and there. I may have to do a little sanding. But I want to get, uh, I want to get the obvious done. Another thing, of course, is even though this thing is tight, you do feel a little looseness, so I may have to do a little gluing here and there, just to get it out of the way. Now, the actual construction of the barrels is a bit weird. It tells you to do this. Put one like that, put the other one under it like that, form it all into one part, but it doesn't stay together. It just doesn't hold together, because there's nothing to give it a grip or snug feel to it. So what I want to do is take two of them, Put it in like so, then flip it around, take the other two, put them in its position, like that, and then slide it up through here. And then you have the hole here, which, uh, first I gotta assemble these two parts. This one here. And if I remember correctly, I gotta make sure I have the right orientation. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. So that goes like that. Nope. Oops, I forgot. This one goes here. This is the actual uh, sight. And then here's the grip. Then we take this part. Put it like that. 